All right, everybody. Well, welcome back to the Scales Homestead. If you're new to the channel on YouTube, click that subscribe button, click that notification bell, and select all beside it, and you'll be notified every time we upload a video or a short. Um, if you're finding us on Facebook, you can go to our page and like us and follow us, and you'll be notified when we upload a video there. So, now that that's out of the way, Today, we are going to talk about jellies. <clears throat> now, I know it's still wintertime. Um, there ain't no fruit on no trees. Ain't no, well, there ain't even no leaves on no trees, let alone fruit on trees. But you don't necessarily have to have fresh fruit to make jelly. Um, you can go to the grocery store and buy just about any fruit. Um, in so sometimes in the in the fresh section which is it's all like hydroponically grown it's not grown in the ground it's grown in big water vats but anyway um they do have some in the fresh section but they also have some in the freezer section which is essentially just sliced up flash frozen fruit so you can thaw that out and cook it down and get the juice and 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 make jelly out of that you don't you don't have to wait until it's time to like harvest peaches or strawberries or whatever um you you may want to be making you know um you can just said just go to your grocery store and buy some some either fresh produce over there or uh go to the freezer section and buy some uh flash frozen not in syrup you don't want to get the ones that's in syrup just just regular just fruit that's frozen like we have this it's just great value sliced peaches. It's not in any kind of uh, any kind of syrup or anything like that. Um, now, I mean, as a homesteader, you definitely want to use as much fresh stuff as possible. But, like, say you want to get ready for a farmer's market and make some jellies. I mean, people make jelly year round, and well, fruit ain't ready year round. Um. So the only way to have fruit ready for like a farmer's market or something like that, like our local farmer's market opens up at the end of this month. So we would like to have some jellies ready for sale at the farmer's market. So in order to get a jump on, not the competition, but just a jump on being able to get your products out there and people liking your products and you being able to sell more of them, this is what we're going to do today. Um, we're going to be doing... Two batches, I, I'm not going to, I mean, we're not going to walk you through both batches, but we are going to be doing the peaches. And then over here, like this, is strawberries. And it's some that we just bought, you know. I'm, I mean, strawberries are not growing yet. It's still way too cold. So um, we're just, we went and bought two packs of strawberries, and that's generally enough to make enough juice to make one batch of strawberry jelly. So we're gonna make some strawberry, we're gonna make some peach. Um, we also got some mixed fruit in the freezer and we also have pineapple. So we're gonna experiment with that a little bit, make like a mixed fruit jelly and we're gonna make a pineapple jelly to kind of see how well that goes over. So the way we're gonna get our juice is we have this. My wife bought this a couple years ago and as far as for, uh, jelly making it's man it has changed the way we extract fruit used to we would put the fruit in water boil it boil it boil it boil it boil it just cook it down cook it down cook it down and you got to strain it through cheesecloth and all that mess to get all the if you don't if you're not making a jam if you're making jelly you don't want all the pulpy stuff in there all the pieces of fruit so you got to strain it so <clears throat> um the way this deal works is this has water in it already and um then you have this uh this spot right here now you got a little groove in the front of this thing right there that this fits into so what happens is you put your fruit to beat the fire out of the microwave you put the fruit in this little strainer basket which slides down inside there like so 
And then you turn the fire on under it and water balls. The steam comes up through this little, the steam from the, uh, the boiling water comes up through this hole right here where the strainer basket's in there. So then the steam goes through the fruit inside the basket, heating it up, kind of cooking it. Then all the juice and the water falls back down into this, which is where the little, there's a hole in the side right here. And that's where all the juice comes out. So when the juice comes out, there's no, uh, there's no seeds to deal with. There's no uh, flesh to deal with. There's no meat part of the fruit to deal with. It's just, it's just pure liquid comes out. It's even got this hole that's on the inside side is elevated about a quarter of an inch up off the bottom so that any seeds like especially strawberries got little tiny seeds so it's going to fall through the holes in there but they'll settle to the bottom in that little spot and it'll keep it from carrying out this little tube and this little tube right here but we uh generally what we do is we put a bar stool right here with a bowl on it and once the fluid gets up there high enough in the pot up here it comes out this tube we'll show you that part whenever we get to it then we uh, we put a bowl under it a glass bowl and catch the juice in there and we generally we we have not we've not figured it out to the point where we know how much fruit to put in there to get good strong juice for the exact amount of fluid that we need so we always end up with a whole lot more juice so all we do is we just put that in jars and put it in the freezer and we freeze it and we use it on the next round whenever we make some more so this batch may make you know like the, our recipe for strawberry is going to call for uh three and a half cups i think is what it is of, of fruit juice but we'll probably end up with five so we'll have some extra but then the next time the next time we'll probably have enough to add with that and make two batches you know so i mean it's just kind of one of those deals we're still learning it but we really don't we don't care about learning that part we care about just extracting as much good strong juice as we can and make good jelly with so we're going to get all this set up and um, well, I mean, it's just about all the way set up. All I really got to do is put this in there like so. And then all these bowl full of strawberries is going to go in there like that. And then it's as easy as just turning the fire on under it. Well, actually, I have to move it because I'm on the wrong burner. Now I move it over here to that big burn. Turn that on. There you go. Yep. All right. Now, when you get this little contraption, it comes with this pretty cool little stainless steel clip deal that pinches this hose off. So that when the fluid gets up there, if you don't have anything under it, it will stop the fluid from coming out. But, well, you know how it is. We lost it. I'm not sure where it is. So, we got a fork. So, we're just going to stick this fork over it. Like so. And let it be. So, that's going to start steaming. Uh, I put hot water in the bottom so it shouldn't take it that long to start steaming. Anyway, we got our other fixings as far as a pot, sugar, lemon juice, and somewhere around over here I have, we use, uh, we use Serto, I don't know if you see that or not, um, liquid fruit pectin a lot, um, we don't, uh, we do have sure gel in a pouch, but we like, uh, we like the liquid, we use the liquid a lot. So that's what we're going to be using today on the peaches and the strawberry is the liquid. We already got our jar set up over here, brand new in the case. So whenever this, uh, this year stuff starts cooking out and coming out of that tube, I'll, uh, we'll take you over there and show you, show you what's going on with that. 
So we'll be back with you in a little bit. Okay, so finally got heated up. Took it about, I don't know, what, 30 minutes or so. So as you can see, I pulled the fork off the tube. And if you can see it in there, see that little spirally stuff? That's the fluid coming out into the bowl. So we're gonna let that run until we get like three and a half cups. And uh, as you see, it's a nice pretty red color. So that'll make the jelly nice and pretty and red like strawberries, you know. Um, so that is our progress as of now. I'll lift this lid up a little bit and kind of show you what I was talking about. See how, well, the strawberries ain't really red anymore. All that, uh, ooh, lower. All the red is coming out in said bowl with the liquid. So, but as you can see, it's nice, pretty, clear fluid. When we get it up to like four cups ish around in there, then uh, I kind of show you from the side, show you how clean and clear it is. Then, so we're just gonna let this keep on, keep it on for the time being. Okay, so as you can see, we've made it up to the required amount of liquids and it's very very pretty red color so we're going to add that into our pot and like i said earlier in the video we always end up with more than what we need really but it's not i don't think it's going to be enough to run two batches so i'm just going to freeze what's left and then next ditch when i'm home we'll probably make some more so since y'all work over here like so let me get this fork back off there to burn up fire out my fingers all right we're gonna let that keep going so with that it's right at four cups it's like three and three quarters of a cup Ish. so you got to add it's supposed to be a quarter quarter cup of lemon juice but i don't never measure the lemon juice part of it i always just put it in there until i feel happy so i feel happy <laughs> so anyway so we're gonna get the fire going on that and we have seven and a half cups of sugar to add to this and we're gonna bring it up to a boil which it shouldn't take long because that fluid's hot 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 coming out of that juicy thing but the sugar's cold so you know how that goes you're actually supposed to add a little bit of margarine in there too to keep it from foaming but i'm not so in with the sugar And then you just stir, stir, stir. Mix it all in, bring it to a bowl, and then we'll add our uh, liquid pectin. That's what I'm looking for. We'll add that in there at the end. Once this comes to a bowl, we'll boil it for like five minutes. I think is what I got to boil it for, five minutes. Um, then after that boils for five minutes, we'll add the, pack, the pectin. Good Lord. We'll add the pectin and uh once we add the pectin to it we'll boil it for another minute and then we'll go straight into the jars from there so once this comes to a boil we'll be back with you okay so we're boiling and as you can see you see all this like frothy stuff that starts building up you can skim all that to the side and skim that off because well it looks nasty and jelly it really ain't gonna hurt nothing, but it forms a foamy nastiness on the top, and you really, really don't want it to look like poo poo on top of your uh, nice, pretty jelly. So, we're gonna boil this here for just a little bit and uh, add the pectin here in just a little bit. So pretty. I can't do this one-handed. Okay, so like I said, 
this bowl of nasty looking strawberries is all that we have left after uh cooking them down now that of course will not go to waste we have animals that will eat the fire out of that tomorrow once it cools down so that's the, the fruit juice we had left over that will freeze until next time this has been boiling for five minutes now so it's starting to kind of thicken up a little bit so now we're going to add the Charto premium liquid fruit pectin into there and uh and boil it for another minute so we'll be right back with you when we go to start putting it in the jars okay so we uh we boiled this for well it ended up being a little over a minute but you see how clean it is i skimmed all this foamy stuff off the top as it was uh as it was cooking with the uh pectin in there also um I, I didn't say that part whenever i was saying about adding the pectin but it's going to make a bunch more foamy stuff come to the top and you gotta skim that off again so we're gonna move the pot over here close to the jars and put some jelly in it so let's see if y'all can see what's going on right there yeah oh that's gonna be hot too That over there. All right, hang on to that. So, got a funnel. It fits in the jar. And then it's, I mean, it's pretty simple. You just ladle it in there. Drop that right on that napkin. <laughs> So we're gonna get these filled up to about a half inch or so within the top to have a little bit of <clears throat> a little head space in there. Which is good because the funnel fits down in there about a half an inch. So it kind of works out to where you just fill it up to the very base of the funnel. And uh Yeah, well, I'm glad you laid that napkin there, baby. Cause I would have made a mess all over this counter. You always take it. Okay. I may have been wrong on the jug amount, maybe five. Most assuredly gonna need a fifth. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, this recipe said that made eight cups. Oh, you know why? Why? Because I ain't smart sometimes. I figured that up. It's two cups per pint. So I was figuring that up on making four jars would be eight cups, right? This recipe makes eight cups. Right. So that would be four pints, right? Right. I'm putting it in jelly jars. That's three quarters of a pint. Right. And I'm going to need another. Just like I said, I ain't smart sometimes. And I've got them set around all crazy like. Okay. I have heat resistant fingertips now. I feel you. Many years ago. Now, I know y'all can't see this on the camera. But like everywhere where this jelly is like really thin at, like on the sides of this ladle and where it's going in this uh, uh, funnel, that's what I was looking for, that word. 
is already like setting up and like turning into turning into jelly so it don't take long it takes a while in the jar of course because it's thick and there's a lot of it but like if it's out it don't it don't really it don't take long for it to start setting up as soon as, as soon as it's got some room to kind of cool off it starts doing its thing you're gonna need another one? No, I'm down to the very last little okay. piece of a ladle. And I got one, there it is. Let's say I got one that I run a little short. So I'm gonna put a little in it. Just kind of. Space it out. All right. I'll take this a little off. So, now. Get my cabinet saving napkin out of the way. So now we got a little deal of vinegar and a napkin. I just dip that in there a little bit just to kind of get it a little moist. Jesus Christ, that's hot run. And wipe your seal off, your lid off. Not your lid, my God. The rim of your jar off. And you can put the lid on there. And you want to wipe all them off that way it it uh cleans up any jelly or contaminants or whatnot that may have may have uh gotten on there. And just put the lids on, not super tight, but just snug it down a little bit. You don't want to wrench down on it really hard, you know. Just enough that it'll Seal off. So, that's hot. Note to self, if you're using tall jelly jars, you just about, well it makes one and a half times the amount I thought it was gonna make. Cause it made two extra jars, I thought it was gonna be four and we ended up with six, so. It's all right, then. More to go around. Whew. Alrighty. Last lid. All right. Now. So, there you have it. Just like that. Then we'll sit there overnight, and as they cool off, it'll pull a vacuum on the very top of that lid. And well, this is for all the people that don't know about canning, but the people that know about canning, well, if you know, you know. Um, when it pull, when it, as that liquid cools off in there, it'll pull a vacuum on that little headspace that we left in the top, that little piece, and it's got a little little deal in the middle of the lid i don't even know what to call it um a divot yeah reverse divot it's an up divot i guess and uh whenever it whenever it cools off enough and it pulls enough vacuum on there it'll pull that little divot down and pop and uh that's how you know that it's sealed that way the you know the seal's good all the way around the top because it was able to pull a vacuum and pulled the divot down so that it actually sealed but uh anyway we uh <laughs> we appreciate everybody tuning in to this little uh well i ain't gonna call it a cooking video i guess a canning video it's it's i mean you're not like pressure canning or nothing like that but still canning nonetheless um but anyway, hope this helps somebody out, maybe in their endeavors of making jelly. Anytime you buy like the Serto, like either the liquid pectin or I believe they got it inside the uh, powdered pectin too. They got these little instruction things in there. And it, it's got a little graph on there that tells you for, of course they don't cover every fruit, but they got a little, little chart on there that shows you that if you want to make some, either jam or jelly one or the other 
it's got recipes on there for how much sugar you need, how much lemon juice you need, and, and it's got um, <clears throat> it's got directions on how to do what we just did as far as how much fruit juice to use to how much uh, lemon juice to how much sugar and then cook it down for so long, add your pectin or your sure gel powdered uh, gelatin and you know cook it for however long again and and so on and so on it's got and it, it makes really good jelly we use that plenty of times um because it makes really good jelly so i mean there's no there's no need in, in trying to dig through nine thousand cookbooks to find a recipe for something when they do have the recipes in there so for beginners it's very easy just to open the pack of gelatin and get the instructions get the ingredients you need follow the instructions and make you some jelly so anyway, we hope everybody enjoys this little canning video and give the video a thumbs up if you like it. Share it with your peeps, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, we appreciate everybody's support so far on this channel. It is still growing. We do appreciate it and we thank y'all so much and we will see y'all on the next one.